Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Media Podcast. With that being said, let's get into it. Thanks for watching my dad's channel, Crypto Media. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm your host, Justin, of the Crypto Media Podcast, and I have the pleasure of introducing the solutions architect from the Celsius Network. And if you guys haven't heard it on the news, they just broke over $1.2 billion in deposits, in crypto deposits in the Celsius Network ecosystem. So uh, Wasim, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, so where, where did you first hear about Celsius Network? Uh, I was looking around, like, I, so I, go, looking back a little bit, I was a product designer at a, like a, design development firm that I, I started with a couple friends. We, we, it grew to like uh, a, a pretty decent size. Like we were running about 18 projects. We had like 50 uh, different designers and developers working under us. And um, I kept noticing that like all the projects we do would be like something where you'd have to optimize for increasing user attention or something that was like an incre incremental like uh, growth on top of like an already existing product line. Yeah. Um, and I was looking for something new, something engaging, something interesting. Uh, and I was also studying business. Um, well, I had taken some time off, but I was studying business at Babson college. Um, and then my uncle kind of showed me the, the, the Bitcoin white paper and he was like, Hey, check this out. So I, 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 I took it and I started reading it. I, I made my way through like the Andreessen Horowitz crypto canon. And it was all like a philosophical thing for me. I was like, oh, wow, like this is a cool way of solving some issues that I've, I've, I've seen or I've, I've come across in my like studies. Um, but nothing was practical at that moment. Um, but then we started winding down the agency. Uh, this was like in 2017, 2018. Um, and I was looking for something new to do. So as I was kind of searching around, I, I came across uh, a couple cool projects, um, but my favorite of them was Celsius Network. There was this crazy founder who seems like he's done it before. There was um, like, it, it seemed to be growing pretty well. The community was, uh, was pretty engaged when I hopped on the telegram mm -hmm. um, and I was, uh, I was interested. So I sent a cold email out to Mr. Mashinsky with yeah. the most ridiculous uh, subject line, but just to try and get his attention. And yeah, what was the subject the year, line? It was <laughs> Mr. Mashinsky. I am soon to finish my degree, and I would like to be a foot soldier in your war against the banks. Because oh, awesome. I want to career. defy the big banks, or that's what I would say if I was asking for a job. No, he he he. Great so job. one of the big references that he uses is like uh, the blockchain is like a tank, right? Yeah. It's, it's slow, moves only in one direction, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of like war references I was catching in his podcast. So I was like, oh, okay. I'll go with that in the subject line. If it gets right. his attention, then, then, then good. If not, then it was a cold email. But that was a year and two months ago, and I haven't looked back since. So how can people hear about Alex's podcast? I wasn't really aware of it too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you check the Celsius Network YouTube, uh, we now have our own podcast that we're running. There's a guy named Tom and someone named Kim that are, We've put together this thing called Moit, um, okay. where it's basically like there's a long form, like open kind of podcast where someone will talk with Alex for 45 minutes to an hour on any kind of given subject. So we yeah. had Horizon, uh, the Horizon blockchain, mm -hmm. um, the founder of that on in the last one. But then also Alex does a lot of like features. Uh, so he, he was on the one that I like kind of resonated with the most was the Andrew Pompliano podcast. Oh, nice. I'll check that one out. He's a pretty outspoken guy. Hey. Oh yeah. It was yeah. fun to watch him and Alex uh, get into yeah. it. Together. Oh, I can't wait to hear that one. I'm going to check it out <laughs> this afternoon. So yeah. So explain to me what, what does Celsius hope to achieve in, you know, helping people be un like the unbanked and the underbanked and the overbanked find decentralized finance. Yeah. So let's think real quick just about what Celsius is, right? Like Celsius yeah. is, it's an open network. As so long as you pass KYC, you can deposit digital assets and the yield that your digital assets earn through the loans business that Celsius as an institution runs, 80% of that yield comes back to you in the form of interest, right? This is how a traditional hedge fund works. Like if you had a lot of money 
and therefore a lot of leverage, you would take your money, you go to some hedge fund and you'd be like, here's a lot of money. I demand that you give me money back on my money. Right. But that system like kind of optimized on like paper based accounting, right? You had like all these like legacy systems that came into, uh, came into the world that enabled banking, uh, that enabled digital banking, but that also enabled these kind of like economic systems where if you don't have enough capital to use as leverage, you don't have enough demand to even enter into that system. You don't even uh, create enough demand to be permitted to enter into that system. Right. So what the blockchain really does, right, is it permits anyone to have access to a wallet, move funds around without needing to go through some like wire rail or ACH rail. You just send it on, on chain. Um, there's, it's a triple accounting system. So if we have a million users who each deposit a dollar or one user who deposits a million dollars, we get to see it as the same. Um, and because of that, we, we can offer kind of like, if you look at our interest rates on Bitcoin, we pay 4% on yeah. Bitcoin. Uh, if you look at dollars, which is kind of the most comparable uh, to the traditional systems, we pay about 8%, 8 to 10% uh, given the is day. Is that like on stable coins mainly? Yep. So we have, and we support like a whole breadth of them too. Uh, so yeah. DAI, from DAI to USCC, we, we support them all. So I've heard about the sell token. I hold a little bit of it and I, I'm starting to get paid out in it in my, my Celsius wallet. But what is, can you explain to somebody why should they get paid out in sell tokens as opposed to like Bitcoin or XRP or what they're holding? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the sell token has two main utilities. The first is that if you choose to earn and sell, uh, you can earn higher yields. So, so your, your interest rate has a, has a multiplier on top of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know for, for you, if, do you know if you're a gold, silver, bronze or platinum member? I'd have to check my wallet. I think yeah. I'm bronze. I don't have a ton of assets okay. in, in the wallet yet, but yeah. Cool, cool. So depending on how much sell to non-sell assets you have, we refer to that as a HODL ratio. Okay. Um, and if your HODL ratio is below 5% or something like that, I think you're in bronze. Um, if it's above 5%, you're in silver and, and so on. And then depending on which category you're in, you're eligible to earn. Uh, I think platinum is 35% higher yields. So it's so better to convert into sell when you have assets in the, in the wallet? So the, the way that I would look at it is um, you, wanna, you want to have a uh, breadth of different assets, right? Like you don't want to just have uh, one type. You no. can if that's your strategy, but... I like to diversify, right? Like I hold uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, sell token, and then some stable coins. And that, that tends to be where I used to have Dash. I got out of Dash and just threw it all into Ethereum. Okay. Um, but by doing that, right, you're, you're creating a diverse portfolio, but then depending on the amount of sell you have to your non-sell assets, you enable yourself to earn a higher yield on all of your other assets, right? So that, that, that's like one of the utilities. It, 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 it forces the users to uh, restrict the amount of circulating supply because you yeah. have to hold a, a portion of it in your wallet. Uh, but then it also increases market demand because if you choose to earn in sell and you are of a higher uh, portfolio tier, uh, HODL ratio, um, then it forces Celsius to go out onto the market and instead of buy Bitcoin to pay you back with, we have to sell the Bitcoin for sell token, right? Yeah. So in doing that, there also becomes a, a driver of demand and yeah. a restrictor of supply. Um, so you just think of kind of like what happens when supply goes down and demand goes up and right. then you kind of can base your investment thesis off of that. Yeah. Cool. So how, um, what are the safeguards in place? Because when I, when I first heard about Celsius, I think I was listening to Digital Asset Investor and he was talking about it. Like, I just heard about, about this company. I'm like, that sounds interesting. But people are so weary of ICOs and scams. And since 2017, yeah. I know I got scammed once or twice. So how do you safeguard assets on the Celsius network? And what are those kind of securities in place? For sure. Um, j just as a quick point, though, on, on the whole like ICO uh, thing. Like, yeah. I think that um, if you were to take like 
if you looked at like all of the, the different little VC firms that are like popping up and putting money into this, popping up and putting yeah. money into that, right? They expect kind of like a pretty high ratio of failure. Um, like one in 10 or something like that is, is like okay for them. Okay. Um, and if you kind of take that same uh, ratio and you probably apply it to what came of the ICO world, yeah. I, I bet they're probably pretty stable. It's just the ICO world uh, affected more people because more people were able to access it. Right. Right. And therefore you, you amplify the amount of complaints and, and yeah. the amounts. Of, uh, so I, I think that the, the ICO world, like, look, it was, the, the purpose of, of that is to bring money into an ecosystem and enable innovation because there's now capital behind the ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Celsius was no different. We, we ran a, a, an ICO. Uh, we raised about $50 million. Uh, and that's what got the business up off the ground and, and moving. Okay. Um, um, but just to speak, I guess, on the, uh, the, the other side of the question, which is the, like, what safeguards are there in place? Um, so, I mean, first step is security and second step is security, right? So y you as a user have a lot of security tools. If you go onto your app and you click on like profile and then you go to security tips, it actually like will suggest to you uh, better ways to, to, to kind of insure your account. Yeah. Uh, so you have like uh, 2FA and like all, just make sure you have all that as the baseline setup. For sure. Second step is the security of our system. Uh, I can't get into many details there, but we have a, we had an episode with our chief security officer of our weekly uh, AMA where he kind of gives some good uh, context there. And then third step is worst case scenario insurance, right? Um, and we used to have, uh, we used to work with a group called BitGo. BitGo had hot wallet insurance or sorry, cold storage insurance. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was nice, but you also have to remember kind of like, how the business works, right? Money is always moving. It's, it's always in, in trends. It's always in hot storage. Uh, so we recently, by recent, like two months ago now, made the transition over to um, this really cool MPC-based like custodian that enables you to also work with other custodians called Fireblocks. Okay. Uh, and Fireblocks has $10 million hot wallet insurance. Um, so we, we make sure that, that the users covered on like, the user's end, but then on the system's end. And then if, if in the worst case scenario, something does come up, uh, there's also the, the insurance on the hot wallets. Perfect. That's awesome. Moving on. Also one more yeah. point. No, um, sure. from a, from a financial perspective, uh, what Celsius does is, is kind of different than like a traditional financial institution, right? Like we're not, we're not holding uh, 10% of assets and then lending out the right, like fractional reserve style. Right. Bank. Okay. We always have uh, more assets than what has been lent. So we are, we are balanced differently than a traditional uh, retail like uh, bank as, as we might be competing against. But yeah. one of the forms of competition is just to do that in a way that is more sustainable. And <laughs> that's what we think. Yeah. Has Celsius butted heads at all with, with us regulators or other countries and stuff in the lot in the past? Um, I don't know how much I can provide in, in, in depth on that, but um, like one, couple points one uh the cell token is not currently available for utility in the united states um uncle sam is not very friendly there uh and then two we have a really amazing compliance team and and our uh, chief compliance officer jeremy i think that uh it's not maybe like budding like head first head butting but yeah. it's a uh, it's like constant uh is this correct are we doing this the right way um, should we approach this differently? And like, this is an evolving ecosystem, right? And in order for the ecosystem to evolve and kind of approach the, the realm of finance that it deserves to be kind of held at, the regulators yeah. and the innovators need to, to work together. So Absolutely. they're not like, the internet wants you to think that everyone is just like, this person here, this person here, and they hate each other. But yeah. in reality, this person and this person are maybe not seeing this, the seeing eye to eye, but in the conversations between them, something new comes. And that's kind of what uh, I see is, is coming out of the, the conversations that uh, all these different crypto companies have been having with uh, the different regulators. Like, like look now, um, there, there's government proposals in the United States to figure out how to use the Ethereum architecture to build a digital U.S. dollar. 
right. if they're thinking at that point, then you know that the, the message from this community, the crypto community, has started to make its way in a positive light. Um, yeah, and even like the Interwork Alliance and stuff, the news coming out about that and all that stuff breaking too. So yeah. if I was, for example, I had a bag of XRP or Bitcoin and I, want, I didn't want to sell it, but I wanted to do a loan against USD during like a, a bull run. What would you like recommend or what not financial advice at all? Just, you know, yeah. but <laughs> how course. would that work? Like it, when you cash out and getting paid back and stuff like the profit. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll walk you through my experience with, 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 with using the, the lending function. Cause sure. um, one of the cool things about the, the people, the group that's building Celsius network is like, we're all equally community members as we are uh, like users and, and, and builders of the, the mobile app experience. Yeah. Um, so when I took out a loan, um, it was super, super simple. You just kind of click uh, the asset that you have, the amount that you want. Uh, it'll then tell you what loan to value ratio do you want? Because okay. remember, they're collateralized loans. So yeah. um, right now, I would suggest uh, you, would, you, you do the 25% loan to value ratio because you can get your interest rate to just be 1%, which is okay. pretty ridiculous. That's phenomenal. Um, yeah, and then if you can you can choose to either uh, get your loan value in stablecoin or in like a, into your bank, right? We'll we'll wire it to you. Okay. Um, and then each month you get a ping in the app saying, "Hey, you got to pay interest. Hey, you got to pay interest." And if you're a sell user and you pay your interest and sell, um, the rate that you pay is actually reduced. Uh, okay. So yet another driver of demand. Um, so, so now that's how you, you get the loan. That's how you make your payments. Then as the asset is appreciating, um, cause if you have like a belief in this ecosystem, you do think that all of these, that all of the assets that you're putting your money into will grow. Right. In value. So the really cool thing is that we will release the capital back to you. If, if Bit, you took a loan against Bitcoin at $10,000, right? Yeah. Or let's let's go back in time. You took it out at five thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. You took a fifty percent loan to value, so you like took you're getting out, a twenty nineteen or something, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. You, you took out like twenty five hundred dollars against your five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin now at ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So you can either choose: Do you want to bring this the loaned value up to five thousand dollars, or do you want us to release uh, twenty five hundred dollars in in capital back to you. Um, okay. And that would be in Bitcoin, right? So uh, your, your loan collateral, you'll always get back, uh, but you'll get it back in two ways. One is if the asset appreciates or two, once your loan ends, you pay back the value and then it, the value of the loan and then we'll re release the uh, locked collateral for you. That's amazing. Like I didn't understand how mind blowing that was until you properly explained it, but thanks for, explaining that Westy. That's yeah, cool. no, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, also, cause if you think about it, like this is what anyone who has real wealth does, right? Like they, right. they have, they have assets that appreciate and then they borrow against their assets. They don't sell. That's no. how they, they remain so wealthy. So the, again, like the cool thing about the blockchain is you can take all these things that innovate the innovations, financial innovations that very wealthy people have access to and just bring them, to give that same degree of treatment and access, but yeah. to a whole new section of people. People that, I mean, we're just now learning that, oh, this is how you can do it? Oh, cool. But yeah. there's there's been people that have been playing this game for forever. Forever, yeah. It's just that like, from what I understand is, we become the shareholders in Celsius, not like with the bankers, you know, you pay your people that have money in the banks, you know, one or 2% interest a year, and then they pay their shareholders 15 to 18% a year. Yeah, more. It's, it's no, infinitely more, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, there, there's a, there's like a, there's like fiduciary terms associated with the word shareholder. Yeah. Um, but Celsius optimizes for its stakeholders, right? Yeah. So instead of trying to figure out how to pull value from stakeholders and give to shareholders, Celsius has figured out how to build a model that just optimizes for the depositor and the depositor is who we see as one of the main stakeholders. Yeah. So do you have to, I'm in Canada, Wasim. So do I have to be an American to, to access the loan or do I just have to have a U.S. No, no, bank no. account? Uh, global. As long as you're in uh, like a, a covered jurisdiction, 
Um, yeah. And you'll see that in the app. Like if you open up the app and you click on the loan section, it'll tell you. Um, and I mean, Canadians can take out loans. Um, sad thing, I'm in Texas right now. Uh, I can't take out a stablecoin loan because uh, Texas does not permit uh, us to have stable coins in the app. Okay. Uh, but again, it's, it's dependent on your jurisdiction. Uh, you, you're, you're eligible for certain services within the Celsius app. Canada oh. is super friendly. Justin Trudeau seems to be a pretty decent guy. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a Bitcoin maximalist that hard. I heard some kind of scammy thing about him saying like, oh, go to this app and, you know, print Bitcoin or something. I'm like, what is he talking about? Yeah. But, oh, that guy. These are, these are that's like pretty bad, man. There's, uh, there's too many scams going on in this, in this yeah. ecosystem. So how do you guys offer 1% interest on, on your crypto back loans? Yeah, yeah. So, so remember it's a 25% loan to value, right? So yeah. um, uh, if, you had, um, if you had that in the app with us, right? Like you, you took out a loan of $1,000, meaning you had $4,000 worth of Bitcoin or whatever in the app, right? On that $4,000, we would have been paying you 4.5% interest, right? we are no longer paying you that because it's locked as collateral Yeah, and you are paying us that 1%. So not only Celsius there has, has, has saved money, there's less that the institution has to pay in interest. Um, and then because of that, we're able to offer this very, very low rate uh, loan to our users. Um, it's just a, it's, it's something that I don't think any traditional uh, system would do be like, Hey, uh, we can operate in your best interest. Let's right. let's try it out. Um, but our, our loans team is is working every day to figure out how to make the experience easier uh, and, and and the the actual offering more powerful. Um, awesome. This is a promotional offering, so I think it ends in like ten days or so. Uh, so take advantage of it. If what was the offering? Sorry, uh, the one percent. Oh, loan. the one percent, and then it goes back to what? Uh, I believe it was at like four four percent. Okay. which is still pretty ridiculously low. Yeah, no, that's crazy. So, um, yeah, where do you see, oh, sorry, I had another question. Are you guys planning to release like a Visa debit card or like a cash debit card or anything and Visa card in the coming yeah. weeks or months? Or? Um, not in the direct near future. And then even if we do, like, so I, 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 I'm lucky because I also got to work in like traditional, uh, like, banking infrastructure world before celsius so yeah uh, i worked with this company called called moto uh if you've ever moved value between like uh your um bank of america and paypal or something like they're sitting in the middle of that transaction they're, they're powering the, the the rail the movement of value yeah um and in traditional world you have like ach you have debit and you have wire and then if you're in europe you have this rail called sepa yeah um and then there's these providers that'll sit, uh, they'll come to you in the world of crypto and they'll be like, Hey, uh, do you want a debit card? Sure. Like we'll give you a debit card. We have all the rails connected. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's too easy. And it also just is a fee. It's, it's a fee based business model. So yeah. by sitting in the middle of that transaction, there's a fee that's being siphoned off and that's how these institutions are staying alive. And that's how the user thinks they're getting a good experience. That's not what we want. <laughs> it's no. too easy. We want something that's like very unique, something that, that no one else is, is, is able to offer, something where it's like, think, um, think like you go to uh, Walmart, right? And you pay for your groceries using your mobile app, which is a pre-created loan. Uh, and because it's corporate cash rail instead of any of these other things, meaning it's going direct to, Walmart, you're getting a 7% discount. And then the interest that you're earning on your other assets is going to pay back that loan. And then your app tells you like your, your grocery, uh, your, your, your grocery allowance or whatever for the month, like okay, yeah. that closed loop system that actually helps the user out and yeah. forces you not to sell your assets, but instead yeah. to build equity, continue to build equity while you have the ability to spend in the real world. Right. Kind of like magical, experience is what we uh kind of like seek to design at celsius not just be like here's a card with our name on it <laughs> our name on it yeah because i've heard of things like crypto.com like monaco and stuff like that but that's like that's kind of a different ballpark altogether 
I mean, they're, they're, they're a com- competitive service, right? Like they, yeah. they offer interest income. They have like a pretty debit card. That's like a little piece of metal that they make it like green or gold or whatever. Yeah. And they, that's, that's great. I, I think that they're um, likely uh, heavily subsidized by investor dollars. Um, and that, that's fine. If you're a user, take advantage of that while you can. It was like when Uber and Lyft were fighting against each other and we were getting right. like $3 rides everywhere. Yeah. Um, but in, in my opinion, it's also just too easy of a product to, to offer. Like yeah. right, right yeah. now, Celsius has built a very, very strong core offering of loans and interest income. We yeah. now have yeah. taken this and we, we, we allow other partners to use our APIs. So uh, if you see a group called Mode or a group called Bitwalla and then some exchanges also to come soon, um, you're able to just earn interest through Celsius using our APIs, but you'll never know it. They, they abstract it. It just looks like uh, you're earning interest on their platform. So we're, we're abstracting our offering and bringing it to more people, yeah, which is the yeah. same as how those, uh, those debit and credit card companies work. But instead of using a separate service for, for us bringing this kind of like real world purchase ability to our users, we want to be the ones to build it. We want to think through it. We want to really, really understand how we're not just going to be creating some kind of like easy way to pay with Bitcoin and then make everyone into a Bitcoin pizza guy. Yeah. But instead, really think about every implication of how the purchase takes place, where the fees go, uh, if the asset is to appreciate, how you would structure a loan so that you're not actually losing access to the asset you're just uh, taking like your value out against it so that in the long run, our users are more wealthy uh, than if they were to just have spent using some swipe debit card. Yeah. Cause I feel like that's really the true nature of, of decentralized finance. Isn't just to like piggyback on what the bankers are doing and make your own kind of like model to fight, but to have a totally different framework. And like, it's a total paradigm shift in thinking even for like, decentralized finance and you have to like educate yourself to really get it you know, to like no, to sure. adopt it like, also i think this is this is the sad part but it's like the most true in traditional finance uh, or, or whatever you want to call it you optimize for your bottom line right and you optimize to grow revenues right yeah in this new world of finance call it DeFi, call it whatever you want you, your whole focus is how do I do well for my user? So, so you at the end yeah. of the app, right? Yeah. And that as a designer, which is, is what my, my background was in, is a, is a complete paradigm shift from, from how you would think about optimizing for, for a different uh, kind of more traditional operation. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Wasim, thank you so much for your time. I know we'll maybe chat for a minute or two after this is wrapped up, but I had a last question I didn't ask you when I sent you the email, but what's like an exciting project you've been looking into in this, in like just crypto in general that that's get you, gets you excited to like hodl or whatever. Gotcha. So like outside of Celsius. Yeah. Um, so I would either go, they're, they're, they both serve the same kind of function. There's a Uniswap and a company called Toddle. Um, yeah. They kind of enable immediate asset swaps. Okay. Um, and I, I love both of them for, for the same reason, user experience. Like it is the most seamless onboarding experience. You just click, link your MetaMask, choose. I want, uh, I have, I have uh, Ethereum and I want sell token, hit enter. And then the transaction happens. There's no need to figure out how to navigate an exchange. There's no need to any normal retail user who can figure out how to download MetaMask will be able to use those. And I think that that's really like the future of what this ecosystem needs. So the currency just goes into your MetaMask wallet after you swap it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you would, uh, you, you would hit swap your ETH would get uploaded to the smart contract. Yeah. uh, And then, the the other side of the market already exists in uh, in in these protocols. Uh, yeah. If you set up like a pool, you have to set up uh, both the like maker and the taker, or the, the both ends of the market. So if it's yeah. the sell Ethereum market, you have to post sell and Ethereum. Um, and then basically, if you pop in and you want sell, you're going to deplete the sell balance and you're going to increase the Ethereum balance. Yeah, which goes into their pricing algorithm and how it works, but 
just think that now that the cell balance has been depreciated, where does that go? That just goes to you on your MetaMask, which is where your assets originated from in the first place. Wow. And it's like, yeah, dude, that the the way that they thought through that, the 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 process for the user, the the way that kind of like um, it, it's bringing just seamless UX into an ecosystem that's kind of, I think, uh, really in need of it. Yeah, uh, makes me very happy. But that's mainly for the Ethereum network, right? For like Ethereum yeah, it's, it's, it's only yeah. Ethereum. Currently. Okay. Could you see that happening in non-Ethereum, like overall? Would that be possible someday in like a decentralized? Yeah, so, so I mean, there's there's groups like uh, Changely or Liquid has this thing called Quick Exchange, but those are the those are both like uh, they're centralized, right? But that's what yeah. enables them to have this what's called interoperability. So yeah. the ability to move from like one chain, one network to another network is always, it's referred to as interoperable. And yeah. I think there might be ways to do this in a, in a decentralized format. Um, I, I just haven't yet to see like projects that have scaled that have been interoperable yeah. even between BTC to Ethereum. Like in theory, I guess yeah. you could wrap your Bitcoin and then upload your, your WBTC to your, uh, to your smart contract, but um, who knows if that's how the world will scale? Will it? Will it? Will everything need to sit on top of Ethereum, and Ethereum will be the uh, the transaction settlement layer, yeah. or will everything become interoperable? Will there be some kind of like global standard for how your chain is supposed to look, so that you can uh, move in between different networks easy? Who Who knows? It's it's what the people that are way smarter than me right now yeah. are, are working every day to figure out. So last, qual uh, last question, Raseem. So what would you give advice to somebody who is sick of traditional banking and they're just like totally teed off at the chance of like negative interest rates and stuff? What would your advice be to them? Your first, financial advice, my, my very first piece of advice would be understand how and why that system works the way it does. Really, really sit there, really understand like what incentives have, have led to that uh, coming into existence. And then second, now that you've understood the system, look for systems that have optimized differently, such as Celsius. Look, look for things that are doing business in a way that is fundamentally different from what you are disappointed with. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to go from hype to hype. It's, it's a very in thing to say, F the banks. Yeah. It's not very in thing to really understand why you're saying F the banks. It's yeah. a really in thing to say, Bitcoin's going to be at a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. It's not a really in thing to do the math and understand why you think that that's going to happen. Totally. So how can people follow you with seem like, do you have socials or a website or email? Yeah, or? Yeah. So my, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I always, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to grow my Twitter following. For I, sure. I, I have to follow you right after this actually. So I will. Cool. I appreciate it. I'll follow back. Thanks. Um, it's just Wasim Shaboot is my Twitter, uh, and then my LinkedIn. I guess you could add me on there. Um, yeah, those are probably the only two that I'll I'll accept like uh, people that I don't actually know to to follow me on. And then I, I post a lot on Twitter, so nice. uh, you'll see a lot of my thoughts over there. I have to beef up my LinkedIn game, so I'll have to follow you and Alex and the rest of the team. <laughs> All right. So. All right. well, thanks for your time today, man. I so appreciate connecting with you and hearing your insights and just the value you brought to the community as a whole. Anybody okay. watching is just massive. So I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate what Celsius is doing. And I think you just challenged me to put more assets into Celsius and to take out a 1% loan. So if you guys take advantage okay. of it, I've got a link in the description. You can get 10, I think, is it $10 referral if they use like a referral link? $10 referral. And then you get paid out in 30 days, $10 in Bitcoin or... Uh, yeah. yeah, in Bitcoin, or I believe because you're in Canada, you'll actually be earning sell. Yeah, you're right. Cool. Well, take care, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show and got lots of value, and we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching my dad's channel, Crypto Media. Be sure to like, comment,